God! You fell off of a mountain. Were you on a horse? Or were you walking? I was climbing at 8,000 feet. You were climbing. Are, were you a rock climber? By, no. By, by hobby? You just one morning woke up, decided you were going to climb. I just wanted to go out there. and I'd been up there before, and I was going to the Northwest Territory for a sheep hunt. Mm -hmm. And you had to get your lungs broke into altitude for that kind of stuff. So we were up there, and had on my gun pistol as usual. We wasn't hunting anything because it ain't hunting season and you couldn't hit anything from a mountain with a pistol. And, uh, you know, if you fly airplanes and run around to the jungle and Africa and Costa Rica and fool around, something's going to happen down here. And it happened. And I just accepted for that. But uh, I thought it, the singing was going to be over with after that happened. But it hadn't, it wasn't at all. Well, yeah, I've had five operations and I got two to go. But they put a lot of things back that weren't there. Mm -hmm. They really helped me out. And uh, we've been playing uh, in, uh, four months and signed up. We didn't think there'd be any more records or any more singing or anything. But everything turned out fine. Well, I was I was curious to know whether during all your singing and and all the influence that uh, you must have had from your father, did you ever entertain the idea of playing rock and roll or going into that vein rather than staying in a country music vein? That's what we just did on the Friends album. That's what I heard, but nice. I haven't heard the album yet. That's what we just did, and it's really fun and collab play a lot of instruments and I'm kind of a ham when it comes to picking and I like to do that and I don't know if it's what it is nobody's got a title southern rock or redneck rock or progressive country seems to be the nice title and we've played some shows with the Tuckers and uh, everything has come off real good we never expected anything like that but we just go out there and do what what feels good now, we get put down for some of it and we get praised for some of it. But I enjoy, it's not a job, you know, it's fun, and that's the main thing. To look forward to getting out there. Well, so on this album, I understand you've got uh, an almond and toy, mm -hmm. what's his last name? Caldwell. Yeah, who was really very good. Marsha Tucker Band was in Dothan not long ago. And Charlie Daniels. And Charlie Daniels. Bless their hearts. Are you going to play any numbers tonight that's on that album? Oh, yeah. Many. Mm -hmm. Is that your feature? Like, since that's your latest album and most of your shows yeah, geared we, to Yeah, you know, we, we just enjoy doing a lot of those off of there. It feels good with the band. We do a lot of that. And we do uh, one of Charlie's songs. And, of course, we had the cut on Can't You See before Waylon ever thought about it. And me and Waylon were talking about it at the Outlaw Festival in Louisiana, and he said, ain't you going to release it? And Tori was saying the same thing in Birmingham. I said, yeah, I want to release it, but MGM doesn't want to. So that's why I'm no longer with MGM. I was right here at Troy, Alabama when they called uh, in December of 75, and they said, they're not going to, they're going to release something else. And I said, well, that's fine, because there won't be any more on that label. So that's over with, and we're on Warner Brothers. But I'm glad that Waylon got it out because somebody needed to release it. It's it just a, a Cracker Jack song. Do you own your own publishing? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you might laugh, but, like, I understand that uh, Marshall Tucker is the only band on Capricorn Records that has their own publishing rights. Uh, knowing Phil Walden, I imagine that's true. And you're talking about a lot of talent there, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. Power play. It alerted me all of a sudden to a fact that a lot of talent and a lot of a lot of people's work was being used by a lot of it, which is nothing new. Mm -hmm. you know, I know that, but I just wondered, you know, how you were handling your. Oh yeah, we tried, but we just because we got a song, you know, we 
we just got the best song, period. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Shel Silverstein's song, Vince Matthews song, Toy songs, some of mine on that album that I'd saved up for about a year and a half instead of just here's another song to put on there. But uh, we've got a little one uh, up there in Coleman, Alabama. On that album, everything turned out fine. But as far as our next Warner album, I don't know. We'll probably have two of ours, maybe more, I don't know. Because we just want the best material, whoever writes it or mm -hmm. publishes it. Well, how much writing are you doing? Since I fell, hardly any, none at all, which is bad. I was doing a lot before that, mm -hmm. and I hadn't written too much since then. Just a couple of songs. It's been kind of busy just between uh, hospitals and trying to get back on the road and forming a band and all. Just hadn't sat down to do it. And then Mother's Death and Grandmother's Death. And uh, winding up the uh, dissolvement of management in Nashville and that bloodily the booking agency in Nashville just took up a lot of time. But we got some people watching for songs for us and hope that they can come up with them. Look at those rings, how nice. Yeah. Now that needs something distinctive like that. <laughs> Who made those for you? Mm, like mother, did you have mother them? gave me that one about 10 years ago in Nashville. I got that one about six years ago. That's beautiful. Something, something for stage wear. What of your father's songs that you do, do you think feels the best to you when you perform them? Do oh, you feel more as though that they're as much your own as maybe they were his? Oh, no. None? Mm -hmm. They all feel like his? Mm -hmm. They started feeling my own in 73 and 4, and then I wound up in the hospital. Because uh, I'm not going to be Hank Williams. No, I, of I tried not. that. And I was feeling it all right. That's why I wrote the Living Proof. I sang them old songs to daddies until they've all come true. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, the favorites that I like are uh, people, some that people don't know. They'll never take her love from me. And uh, uh, Blue Love in My Heart. Uh, be a Bachelor Till I Die. You know, they're a little lesser known. You Win Again, as far as the big songs, would probably be my favorite one. I like to do that one on the piano. And, uh, of course, show songs, Jambalaya and Kalija. Fiddling. Classic. I'm always, you know, I'm playing Dobro on this or Fiddle mm -hmm. on this, and that, that's my contribution to it, you know, just picking on it. As far as the ones that I really get into would be the How you doing? Living Proof and uh, Montana Song, the Last Love Song, It's All Over But the Crying, Eleven Roses, Raining in My Heart. I like to do that one. Probably the Last Love Song more than any of the ones that I've written. And then now, you know, the Can't You Sees and the stuff we had on that album and the Stone to the Jukebox. And, uh, some of those that we had on there. Well, you know, I lived them. They're all true. I really like to do those. Those are the best kind. I don't do Standing in the Shadows anymore too much because it's just old, older stuff. We need to do newer stuff. But since getting hurt, you can kind of get into any of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just being able to do it again. To sing, you know, and really get into it. Well, you were blessed, though, you know. Oh yeah. I mean, that's real obvious. And a lot. I guess it kind of makes you spend a lot of time thinking mm -hmm. spiritually and and mm -hmm. otherwise, and, and what. I laid Changes. up in that hospital and I said, well, Lord, you know, I told you I didn't want to sing anymore. A lot of times, and you fixed me where I can. And that's the way it is. So I'll go off to Auburn and I'll 
play around with uh, wildlife or forestry or something like I like to do anyway. No gripes, no complaints, because in uh, 73 and 4, I didn't want to sing. I wanted to be off the road, and I did. I quit the road. December 74, and never hit another lick until May of 75 because of that fall. We were going to start up in about September or October of 75, and the fall took care of that because I'd made that Friends album, and we'd been over there with Phil talking to him, and we had some groundwork laid, and then that thing came along. Uh, first, they didn't know if I was going to live, then they didn't know if I was going to see out of one eye, then they didn't know uh, if I'd be able to get this roof of the mouth built back correctly. And, uh, just a whole lot of blessings and miracles mm -hmm. all turned out right. Well, I don't know why, but they did. The answer to that, I can tell you, and that's because you're not through doing what it is that you're here to do. That's what a lady said there at the hospital. She said, you've got something, something in on this store. earth to do. And I, I really feel that uh, your time is not up until the plan's complete, oh, definitely. you know. When you get bones driven into your brain there and they go right up in the seam instead of going one way or the other, something's right. You know, you got somebody's watching you when you're going down the Rockies. And she said it, you know, you've got something to do here. And that must be the reason why. So I got a, a second chance and we're going to take it. You have to go. And thank you very much. Thank you.